Okay, we're going to make an audio collage and use, use a bunch of tracks. And so the first thing we're going to do is add some tracks. Now we want to avoid these um, surround sound tracks. You see they say 5.1. Um, so the default is, I believe, is three stereo tracks. So I'm just going to add a few more um, to get me going. I'm going to go into sequence and add tracks. And I'm going to add, uh, let's say, three tracks for now. And I definitely want them to be after audio three um, because I just really don't want to deal with these surround soundtracks that I'm not dealing with at all so I go after audio three and check to make sure that your timeline is the same as mine and standard you can see I mean it really does refer to a stereo so you'll get a stereo track uh, and we'll add those okay so I'm gonna go in and just kind of bring in some of these are some old files that I've created I'm just gonna scroll through them and just pick out I'm thinking of different kinds of sounds like like organic and high-pitched versus mechanical and I also want something that I can do a fade. Okay, so we'll just listen to this and it probably won't sound that good, but let's just hear what it sounds like. So all the sounds are in, and it just sounds like a bunch of noise, really. Um, and one of the problems is, is that they're all, they're, they're all at the same level, and probably shouldn't be. So the clock is definitely too loud. Um, so I'm going to, first I'm going to um, name my master tracks, or I will go crazy trying to figure out which is which. And And I think we're going to move that. So um, now I know I want to bring that clock ticking way down. The pencil writing is fine. The projector's probably a little loud the birds are a little loud. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move that somewhere else. Here. Okay. And so already that's a little better. It can use some tweaking with the sounds. I might bring down the birds and the film projector. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is um, I can keep building on this and, and changing the volume. Uh, as you know, I can also go in and make some keyframes by hitting Command and clicking on my rubber band here and sort of getting sort of minutia in the way I want the volume to go in and out at different points um, and collapse that. But I can also uh, go in and what I want to do, what you'll likely want in your collage is for the tracks to change clips over time. So in this, uh, what is it, the third track, I'm going to go ahead and change it midway through from a film project projector to a jackhammer. You can even see by looking at the levels that they're pretty similar sounds. Okay, so that, that transition is, is quite abrupt. Um, and I'm just going to pull it in even further. And I'm, and I'm going to pull it in even more. So it just goes from 
clip away so you can see it better. So, and I'll zoom in on that. So you see they're both mechanical, white, noisy kind of things. And you can see their levels are very similar in the way that they look. But they do have a transition that I want to deal with. Now in our last project, we talked about putting them in layers, two different tracks, and making the, the second clip go underneath the first clip and making this volume go down and that volume go down so they had a smooth transition in between. Well, uh, we can do a kind of shortcut in Premiere and that is under Audio Transitions. You have a folder called Crossfade and there are only three crossfades, at least at the default if you haven't bought any third-party crossfades uh, or audio transitions. Um, and uh, uh, there's, they have a, they have slightly different uses. So um, what the constant gain will do is it will give me an audible dip in sound, like as if I made uh, keyframes here and pulled my rubber ba rubber band down and did the same thing over here and then overlap the two. Um, constant power, however, will do the same thing. It will give an overlap of the two audio clips without the dip. So it really depends on your context which to use. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that audio gain over here and hear that. And that's a nice transition. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and double click on that and you can actually see what it looks like. We don't need to go in here and mess around with it, although you can, that's why it's here. But it gives you a visual um, representation of exactly what's going on in this uh, crossfade that I did. Um, so it, as, it is as if the two clips are overlapping each other with a transition in between. And because it's constant gain, that means it may have an audible dip. And I can actually hear that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And an audible dip is, might be what you want sometimes. Uh, and I'm going to do a constant power. And you might not be able to hear it in this recording, the difference. Yeah, but it's much more constant. I don't have a dip. If I double click on that, it looks exactly the same. Um, but these two, this isn't going from low volume to high volume anymore or high volume to low volume anymore. They're just staying constant. Okay. And uh, the third crossfade is called an exponential fade and this is enormously helpful. Uh, what this will do is it will create a fade in or fade out. So I can I can use this on my clock ticking. It's one place I can use it. And if you can't hear that, let me go back to my audio mixer. Um, and it's very difficult to hear anything I just did with all of these things going at the same time. So uh, what I can do is I can uh, see these two buttons here are for mute and solo. Now what mute will do is mute my clock ticking. Not exactly what I'm looking for but it does tell me I could go in and mute all the other things so I can hear my clock ticking. Or I can just click the S button and you see how it automatically turns all these into an M. So that way I can zoom in on my clock ticking and listen. And it does indeed fade in. And I can, you know, stretch that or shrink it uh, to however I like. Um, so, uh, another thing I can do, which is a little bit nice, when you will be playing back your track, it will be played in 207 and we'll be able to hear it on the stereo speakers. And uh, this little master left and right stereo, um, 
you know, we can give it, we can give your audio piece kind of an asymmetrical sound. You'll be able to hear it on your headphones as well. I mean, you, you can be really crazy and make, you know, some of your tracks completely on the left side purposefully, like having the birds kind of only sound like they're coming from the left speaker or the left side of the room and create an echo. Or, you, you know, you can just sort of give it a little bit of asymmetry, then it will create a sense of volume. And, you know, you can listen to it uh, as, as you experiment with it in your headphones and uh, adjust it as you like. Uh, so hopefully that will help uh, for you to set up your, t it's only a 10 to 30 second audio sound collage with the clips that uh, you created or the ones from the network folder.